I Miss mean, Ode, I think you can start letting people in. Miss Ode, I think you can start letting people in. Okay, we are going to start in soon. Uh, we just wait for a bit for people to join in from the waiting room. In the meantime, for the kids who are already here, why don't you write in the chat? Because we want to know your name. We want to know where you are joining us from. So please, in the chat, can you write your name? and the name of your school and the city you are from. So Miss Melanie just want to know three things. Your name, the name of your school, and the city you are from. Okay, you can start writing in the chat. And this is Ms. Melanie with the Kodokido team from a lot of, uh, of our branches, plus our special guests, which I will introduce later, okay? Wow, good. We have somebody from Medan, we have somebody from Jakarta, we have somebody from Jogja, Surabaya. Yeah, and somebody mentioned about the YouTube. Yeah, so for your information, this event is also broadcasted to the Code Kido YouTube channel. So in case you get disconnected in Zoom, uh, you can also listen in from YouTube. Yeah, we have somebody from Bali, nice. And Malang. Uh, for Mr. and Miss from Kodekido, you guys can also write your name, please. So the student can also know your name. Hi, Kendri. Hi, Mr. Siva from Jakarta. <clears throat> Kendrick is from Makassar, yes. That's another island in Indonesia. Good. <clears throat> 
Okay. Um, you guys can keep writing your name in the chat. In the meantime, I'm going to show you the agenda for today. Today we're gonna spend about 60 minutes and hopefully it's a very useful 60 minutes with all the kids and uh, the presenter here. We are going to talk about two things today. The first one is um, I am just going to review very quickly for workshop one because maybe some of you couldn't join workshop one. And then we're gonna have uh, introduction from our special presenter. We're going to talk about WAC overview and any particular question related to the event. You can have an open Q&A. And if some of you have started working on your project and if you have some specific question or if you just want to share maybe your initial idea, we will see if we have time at the end. You guys can also share that, okay? So, First thing first, just very quickly, um, we did the first workshop. So, so far, um, when we gather the information about uh, from our students in Indonesia who are interested in joining WAC this year, we have about 300 students sign up. <laughs> Hopefully all 300 will submit a project at the end, but <laughs> yeah. So we, then, so we did the first workshop um, we talk a little bit about the five big ideas of AI. We show we show some example of the platform that the kids can use um, to create a project. And if you guys miss uh, the workshop, everything is already posted in this link in the Kodokido website. You can see if you scroll down, you can see uh, the recording as well as the slides, okay? So the slide, you can open the slide from here and you can see hear the recording from here. There's a lot of good information too. So I encourage you, if you didn't join the workshop one, you can listen to it. <clears throat> now, without further ado, we're gonna go to the next one, which is our special presenter. Uh, Mr. Ruspe Alia Badi, but he would like you guys to call him Rus. Just very easy, very short, Rus. He is the CEO at Ready AI. Uh, I'm going to give the place and time for him to introduce himself. Go ahead. Good, mo good morning, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Melani, and thank you, everyone from. Uh, um, um, Code Kido for being here and all of you, I know this is a Sunday morning for you in Indonesia, so good morning to all of you. Uh, it is also morning for me. I'm not in the US this week, happen to be a little bit closer to you. I'm in Dubai where uh, the World Expo will be taking place after a year of, uh, um, uh, in a way, COVID hesitation and rather I should say new normal. So really great to be here with you. Um, and uh, looking forward to really have a conversation with you uh, for the next, uh, I would say, less than an hour. But most important, I'm really enthusiastic and um, I'm really looking forward to see your participation in WACI 2021 and uh, really excited to see what kind of projects you're coming up with. So let me pass it on to Ms. Milani and then I'll, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll discuss this uh, furthermore. Sure, yeah. So since uh, we are on this page, so let me ask you a little bit too. Um, can you maybe tell this group about your company, Ready AI? Uh, what, what does it do specifically for the kids? And, um, and like what you, your experience so far as a CEO with that company? Uh, sure. Um, so uh, I come from a very different background. Uh, I come uh, from an investment background, polit uh, political background, but uh, roughly around five years ago, the conversation took place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, my hometown. Uh, Pittsburgh is one of the original, P Pennsylvania is one of the original states in the United States. And the conversation started at the time with the Dean of Carnegie Mellon University, uh, Andrew Moore. And the com conversation was somewhere around there. Bruce, we have a problem. We need to make sure that 
tomorrow's world, um, the world where AI natives, your generations, the ones that are listening to this, and also the the um, the the AI native generation should be a diverse generation. Everybody should participate in this AI conversation. Then we realize that there is this big room to bring AI, artificial intelligence, to the broader education system that we have. And that was really how we started Ready AI. Now, Ready AI today is only focusing on AI education in kindergarten through 12th grade. Now we're in about 189 countries and roughly around, as we're speaking, over 100,000 teachers are using uh, Ready AI materials on a daily basis. And uh, we're really happy to be in many classrooms. As, as you see here um, in, 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 in the page in front of you, we just recently also released a new book, which is targeted for kids between the age eight to 12. And if you are on this listening to me and you are between the age eight to 12, or if you know someone between, between the age eight to 12, uh, we thought it is really important for them to know about um, to know about AI, but more important to know about the data. Why? Because everything is data and everything that we do is data and data is everywhere. And it is important for us to know how, do, how is it that we use data? What kind of decisions are we making with data? Because the better we understand what data is and where it's coming from, the better we can understand what is perhaps biased data or flawed data, which is an incredibly important concept that we're trying to bring to young learners like yourself. So if you have a little brother or sister, if you have a little cousin, definitely talk to them about data because once again, everything is data and data is everywhere. So more we learn about it, the better design we can have as a human-centered design. And by the way, learning about data is one of the big ideas which you perhaps discussed it in your first workshop. Uh, and, uh, and it's a major topic that we discuss in the World Artificial Intelligence Competition for Youth. Mm. Wow, that's great. So since you, uh, Ruth was talking a little bit about the new book that they just got launched about data. So why don't we listen to this video? I think this is the video that was also launched as part of that book. Um, so the kids can, can hear a little bit more about it. Today, Claire and Alex want to do something special for their mom and dad. So they decide to make dinner. What should we make for mom and dad? Let's make mac and cheese. Why don't you ask your mom? I know. Claire and Alex ask their friends Carlos, Isabella, and Ethan what they think they should make for dinner. Chicken fingers. Mac and cheese. That's what I said. Dessert first. Cookies for dinner? Dessert first, then chicken fingers with mac and cheese. You guys don't like your dinner? It's not that but we collect the data like you taught me. Sweetie, you did a good job, but only asking your friends is called selection bias because you didn't ask a more diverse group of people in the community, like adults. And also, all the things on this list are things you like. That's called confirmation bias. Oh! Big companies, scientists, and governments Think about selection bias and confirmation bias whenever they collect data in order to make a decision. If the data is the same as what we know or like, it's a real problem. But if we are aware of it, we can spot it, address it, and be able to make smarter decisions based on good data. Based on this data, we're ordering takeout for dinner. So Ruth, uh, can you talk a little bit more about the specific, maybe the link, a little bit linkage between data and coding? Because most of the kids here, they started with like learning coding, programming. So what is the linkage between that? Frankly, we're still trying to figure out exactly what the link is because the definition of that link is really expanding. You know, initially when we look at uh, 
data and coding, we thought about, you know, uh, uh, computational thinking. So what is the meaning of computational thinking? How do we, how should we think? If we think more like computers, or I should say in this case, intelligent machines, does it mean we can perhaps improve our relationship with intelligent machines, in, uh, be it uh, the computers or advanced computers that we're using today? Is it gonna help us as students, by the way, uh, in the beginning of the Zoom meeting, it says, tell us what grade you're in. And I realize I'm still a student, but I'm not, a, I don't have a grade. So as a students of life, what are we learning about it? What's the logic behind it? But the more important part, folks, is learning about computational action. Not only thinking in terms of what uh, programming might be, but more important and beyond that, how do we apply that into our real world scenarios? Let me give you an example. You know, if for example, you look at Fresh Squeeze on data, Clara and Alex, they're trying to figure out with data what they can do to in a way coordinate a better station. I'm not revealing too much about this story. I hope you go, by the way, you go to freshsqueezekids.com or contact uh, uh, Code Kiddo and they, they will uh, tell you where you can get the information. So you can go ahead and uh, in, in this story to see where uh, in a way Clara and Alex are gonna set up a lemonade stand. Why is this important? They're going to be using data in order to make that decision. By the way, the, after they do the sales, they're donating that money to a hospital. What, where are we going with this story? Where we're going is it's important to learn about computational thinking and programming, but what's far more important folks is what are you doing with it? I don't want all of you to become computer programmers. I want all of you to learn about computational thinking, to apply it to in whatever field interests you, whatever passion you have. It might be in environmental science, it might be in cooking, it might be in transportation, whatsoever. So the real process is computational action, learning computational thinking, learning programming, but really putting it into action in the context of your community. This is also what's important in WAC. WAC is not just the world artificial intelligence competition for youth, it's the world artificial intelligence collaboration for you. So how do we do that? So uh, I, I, I wanted to kind of tie it in back to WACI, but always think about what action you're taking because that action is going to be in a way rooted into your passion. And it is your passion that makes things move forward. The fact that I am here with you on a Sunday morning in Dubai time, as I am in, which is 6 a.m., the fact that you are here with a group of fabulous teachers from Code Kiddo, it's not because they, they're here because they're just here. It's because they have a passion to be here. So go for your inner journey. Find that passion. Connect it with the programming that you're learning with these types of programs at Code Kiddo and elsewhere. And then bring it to the community. That's essentially the message I have for you. Oh, yes. So that it's just one of the tools, right? It's a tool so that we can learn so that we can contribute more to the society. So kids, I mean, if you have questions throughout the presentation, uh, why don't you write it in the chat so we can take a look as well while we mm -hmm. go to the presentation and answer the question immediately as well, okay? We don't need to wait until the end. But write it in the chat. Okay, so that's a good leeway because uh, Rus was tying it back to this event competition. We see uh, maybe what we can share a little bit here is like the history of the event and like what type of um, what type of people that you're looking for to participate and what kind of like maybe looking at last year. Uh, the winners or the top themes, like what 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 is the characteristic of this group of kids? Uh, sure. First of all, WAC once again stands for the World Artificial Intelligence Competition for Youth. It is the largest today 
and it's the most widely spread competition in artificial intelligence. Since 2018, uh, WACE has been attracting hundreds of thousands of students from all continents, from over 150 countries. These students participated, again, prior to the pandemic, they participated in person and remote after the pandemic since 2020. So we've had students participating also remotely from various locations. So it's a global competition where students not only just learn about AI, artificial intelligence, by the way, you there's no one way to learn about AI. I know we've talked about it in, in your first workshop about the five big ideas, and we're talk, we have a rubric and a criteria for that. Uh, but what's important is you really try to apply what you learn because we're gonna go through the criteria of WACE in a, in a bit. But the most important part, if you read in the definition of, of WACE is using AI to solve real problems. That problem should be a problem that you identify. So one of the things I always discuss is we don't wanna have uh, 200 recycle bin or sorting trash project with uh, computer vision. Uh, that, that doesn't do it. What we wanna do is we wanna see what you care about. What is it that you perceive to be a problem in your community? And, how can you use AI in order to be part of the solution? So that's essentially what we're looking for. This global event attracts students age range between seven to 17. By the way, the youngest ever WACI participant was five years old. So we did have a five-year-old as well. So if there is somebody interested who is below seven years old, I would, uh, I, I'll urge you to discuss this further with uh, Ms. Milani and uh, her team at uh, Code Kiddo, and then let me uh, let let her know. I'm sure there will be a way to accommodate for that. The other part of it is impact of AI technology, showcasing the impact of artificial intelligence on uh, the future world through you guys is what's important. We don't this, we don't expect you to become data scientists or be roboticists of the future, but in a way, what we're looking for is how do you bring the, in a way, solution through AI uh, to what you're looking at? And again, uh, uh, Code Kido is our 2021 WAC partners. So for questions, for workshops, please do uh, uh, work with your amazing group of teachers and uh, community organizers, because that's a really the best way to go about it. Remember, part of the C is not the competition, it's collaborations. The better and the more we collaborate, the better results we get out of the competition. So as was mentioned, the, the previous couple of years was done in, in person and the past two years has been online. Um, so how does it work in terms of in the online later on when they have to present the project? Maybe you can tell these kids uh, what to expect if they are selected to present live. Well, the truth of the matter is, I think if we go to uh, the if we go to the rubric, I think that's a better way to a little bit explain about the previous projects. But I'm also a little bit hesitant to talk about previous year's project. By the mm -hmm. way, if you want to see the previous year's project, feel free to go to wasty.org and take a look at some of the previous winners and what uh, some of the students, what they've done and uh, what kind of projects. Uh, so for example, what kind of projects were showcases? So past competition is a very good area for you to look at uh, mm -hmm. in different age categories, uh, how students have done. Remember, last year was a year of pandemic. This year is in a way. So uh, how students submit various projects are very, very different. For example, if you look at the projects we had in various categories, um, we've had projects where students submitted, in particular, one of our top projects for high school, 
one of the uh, submitted, which was based on Python. We had projects that were unplugged, which means there was no programming involved whatsoever. So what's really important is for you to go and really find your passion within this. Uh, that's why I don't want to, I, I sometimes hear that students tell me, so what's the best project? The best project is a project that you have the most passion about. Listen, listen, at the end of the day, you're all winners for participating in WAC. That means you care about two things, AI and bringing better solutions to your own communities, but bringing better solutions for lack of a better term, to the rest of the world. So you're all winners in, in some shape or form. But what the judges typically look for is they're looking for the criteria that are going to be uh, important to you, at the same time, showcasing your basic understanding of AI. Yeah. So if your project, for example, is only showcasing computer vision, but really, not encompassing, let's say, voice recognition, object manipulation, path recognition, then probably it's not going to be a very well-rounded project, project altogether. So um, it's really important to look at that rubric. Again, it's not following it religiously, but try to understand what are the best ways that you can in, in, in include all the criterias uh, of AI, as you had it in your in your first workshop, big ideas, five big ideas. And if, by the way, you need a refresher, please go watch the videos. Ask uh, uh, one of your teachers about where you can access these workshops to learn more about the big ideas. But uh, so that's where I would like for you to to go in terms of the direction with the projects and have fun with it. That's a most important criteria in WACI. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so just emphasize again here that this year is going to be all online. No need to travel. So you guys can do it from your bedroom, from your school, or from your uh, living room. And I know some of the students here will join as a team, meaning that you don't, you're not going to work on the project by yourself, but you are going to work with maybe one, two, or three other of your friends. So um, in the team setup, definitely it is also helpful if you can coordinate with your teammates, like how to meet regularly, to talk about um, your idea, to collaborate, right? Because um, one brain, one, um, two brains are better than one brain. I mean, if you can, you can, you can also help each other um, in terms of uh, completing the project. So it is also possible, but if you don't have uh, other team member and you just want to do it as individual, that's also totally fine. Um, you can also participate as individual. Okay. Uh, now maybe I'll go a little bit about the timeline. Um, we did have free workshop and actually the registration is still open. So for if you haven't got a chance to register yourself, uh, you can do so even after this workshop. There will be a special class offered by Kodokido in case some of the student here or some of the participants here want to get a little bit more depth of, of the material. There is some special class that you can sign up. But even if you don't do special class, there's so many resources available. Like if you look at the workshop number one, we actually give you a lot of links in that uh, presentation. Some materials from Ready AI, some materials from Google, some materials from uh, a lot of different organization that, all, uh, that also work in the area of AI, um, especially AI for kids. So you can explore and then if you have any question, you can bring it up to your code to the teacher if you're could be the student, or if you are in your own school, if your teacher, let's say your computer teacher, they may have some knowledge as well in this area, you can always ask them to. Okay.
Yes. Um, so this is the five. Ruth, do you want to add anything on this? I, just briefly, I wanted to tell you where these five big ideas are really coming from. So the five big ideas, folks, is coming from a big effort that was taking place in the United States uh, and around the world among three groups of folks. One group of folks are computer scientists and researchers. The other group of folks are teachers. And the third group of folks are community organizers in AI and um, the companies in AI, that they all came together, really the acad um, kind of research and academic AI uh, heavy, teachers heavy and education heavy, they all came together to decide to design uh, what are the guidelines that the next generation should learn about AI. And they came with this these five big ideas, including perception, you know, how computers or intelligent machines perceive the world. The second was representation and reasoning. The third is learning, which in a way the basics of machine learning, how do computers learn from data? And the fourth one is natural interaction. And the fifth one, which is still very difficult and challenging to think about and define is societal impact. In a way, AI can have a positive and negative impact on the society, but the truth of the matter, it is up to us how we bring that impact. So these are the guidelines that have been set in place. And this effort has been funded by a big research organization in the United States called the National Science Foundations. So NSF and NSF and a big community of AI for K12.org, they come up with this. And this is really the skeleton today uh, uh, of what we have or the foundations of how uh, many schools, many teachers, many organizations are teaching AI based on these five big ideas. And by the way, the definition of each of these ideas are keep evolving. Uh, be it perception, learning, again, representation, reasoning, natural interactions, or societal impact. Particularly societal impact, we're seeing that the definition of the societal impact is, is changing. So, so if you don't mind, let me ask a question and, um, uh, and feel free to, to put the answer in the chat if, if, you, uh, uh, if the organizers don't mind. Just recently, well, in the past few years, we've uh, one country granted citizenship to the first artificial intelligence robot in the world. Anybody can tell me what that country is. Coba ingat nggak anak-anak nih? Kalau yang dengerin berita tadi, Mister Rus tanya. Ada negara yang ngasih warga negara ke robot robot AI negara mana itu? Somebody actually answer in the chat, terus is that correct? Let's let's wait for a few more answer. We'll wait. We'll, we'll probably yes. can wait for the new answer. Yes. So once again, the first country that granted citizenship to an artificial intelligence robot. So what would what is that country? So uh -huh. uh, and we'll come back to it and in a bit and we'll, we'll reveal the answer. But, um, but mm -hmm. so AI is really changing what we're doing, where we are. But um, let me pass it on to you, Milani. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yes, there's a couple of answer actually. Some kids say it's the country where you are now. <laughs> Some people say U.S., some people say China, some people say Japan, Hong Kong, Indonesia, <laughs> okay, Saudi, Laos. <laughs> I think you guys need to, to listen to more news. <laughs> yeah, represent. <laughs> All right, I, I think 
Tell, tell us when you want to reveal the answer. We'll, we'll talk about it. And I want us to all of us to think about this answer a little bit once we reveal it. So the answer is important, but granting citizenship, what we only do to humans, but we're doing it to a robot, has impact on our society. Is it good? Is it bad? Could it be good or bad? And I see the answers are coming in. Yes, it is Sophia, the robot. And I saw one of the answers that was the right answer that came, 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 uh, uh, was mentioned in the chat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll, we'll give it a bit of time, maybe. And okay. then we can come back. One answer was correct okay. in the chat, by the way, from what I've seen. Maybe there are more correct answers. Okay, okay. maybe just a few, few more minutes. So uh, in the meantime, let's take a look. I, I just want to, again, share a little bit to, like, um, encourage as well your uh, creativity and your ideas because for WACI actually there are several categories that you can do your project as Rus mentioned if let's say your project is not related to coding you can you can even submit that as long as it's still related with the idea of AI and how to use AI to solve your problem right but here I just want to show some example of a coding platform that you can use um, to uh, realize to, to realize your project. And of course, some of it can also be related to hardware because as you know, you can install AI on hardware, right? On a robot, on a machine in the factory. Those type of example is how um, it's using AI in in hardware. Um, it is a little bit hard right now because again, our coded video center are closed so the kids cannot even use the tools that we have, the robots that we have. But <clears throat> this is one example that um, this robot called Cosmo using a platform called Calypso. You can use it to program the robot using some AI concept and the robot can perform um, tasks that related to, to your project. Another thing um, that is mentioned here, which I know some of you are quite familiar with, is um, Scratch. Yes. Yes, um, there's some Scratch extension that use uh, the AI capability uh, Picto blocks, which is also very similar to Scratch, but it has um, a lot more AI extension. If you want to work on a project uh, related to mobile apps, Android apps, MIT App Inventor, which is also another block-based programming, this one can also use um, AI extension using the Google Teachable Machine. Right, so you can connect that and, and use it as, as part of your platform. Uh, Python, of course, there's another thing that similar to Scratch, it's called machine learning for kids. That's also something that you can explore further. And for the older kids or the one that's more experienced, if you want to use Python, um, there is a couple of sample project as well, where you can use Python with TensorFlow, TensorFlow and Google Colab uh, to make your project. So these are just some of the platform you can use. And again, the emphasis is not the platform. You can use any kind, but the, the key thing is how you use this tool, how, how you use AI, how you use um, the AI capabilities to solve a particular problem that you're patient with, okay? Jadi harus harus bisa menunjukkan bagaimana kalian menggunakan teknologi ini untuk memecahkan masalah. Jadi masalah memilih masalah itu juga sangat penting. Masalah apa sih yang kalian mau research gitu? Nanti pada waktu di presentasinya ada banyak bagian yang uh, menjelaskannya tentang masalahnya gitu. Jadi masalahnya apa sih? Kenapa masalah itu perlu dipecahkan? Idenya seperti apa? Begitu. Jadi bukan cuma masalah, bukan cuma bagian teknologi, tapi juga bagian riset sekalian untuk untuk masalah uh, problem solvingnya itu juga penting. Oke. Okay.
let's see. Okay, so let's talk as well a little bit about the rubric. As I mentioned just now in Bahasa Indonesia, which I know Rus <laughs> probably don't understand, but basically, as I mentioned earlier, um, there are two two important area, right? One is the AI and the technology criteria, 50%. And then the other one is design and impact. So this is the one that I mentioned is about the problem definition, about the design, how you think of a problem and how uh, you think of the solution. So it is 50-50. So it's not just about the technology, but also about how you can uh, connect this technology and then create and design a solution that will work to solve the problem. <clears throat> may, I, may I add something sure. quickly to that? Yes. Uh, I think this is, uh, folks, uh, for those of you on this call, this is extremely important. Think about it. So imagine I see a lot of you are talking to each other on the chat. A lot of you are um, interacting with each other. I don't think any of you are fighting. I think you're just talking. So what's important, keep in mind that when, imagine you want to work as a team. And I know it's going to be very difficult sometimes to do work as a team uh, virtually. I've been trying to work as a team virtually uh, uh, using computer screens rather than in person because of COVID. It's not the easiest and the most fun way, but it is the best that we have available today, right? What's important to realize is not all of you have the same idea about the particular topic, you know, on your team, a really good team is not the team that all of you think the same way. It's a really good team is a team that you all think in different ways, but you all have different strengths. For example, maybe one of you, in, well, you have someone on your team who's a really good storyteller. So that person could be in a way very good for designing the problem in a way, looking at the problem statement, looking at, you know, adding the creative dimension to it. One maybe is more meticulous. So maybe that person is focusing really more on the technology side of it. So part of it is if you're working as a team and you just take a look at it, we've given the rubric enough, 50% of a rubric is about AI and tech criteria, but the other 50%, as, it, as important as the first 50%, it's about design and the impact criteria. So in order to accomplish both, if you're working in a team, you need a good diverse team. So not a team that all of you think the same way. So that's that's important. That's very, very important to your success in WayC. But most important, folks, success in WayC is one thing, but that's more important to your, your own success by that i mean internal success by that i mean the broader success in life learning how to work with other people from different uh, from different backgrounds but more important people that think very different than you so that's really the the prize the internal prize of way c um, uh, that you're going to get yeah good point Okay, so I think it's time to reveal the answer. So what is the right answer for your previous question? The right answer to that is uh, for the question about the first robot. So the first, the world's first AI robot citizen is named Sophia. It's an artificial intelligence robot, Sophia, was programmed by Hanson Robotics, which is a Hong Kong based uh, company, robotics company. And the first, first robot in the world was recognized as a citizen or received the citizenship of a country of Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia was the first country that in a way gave citizenship, its citizenship to the first artificial intelligence robot in the, in the world. And I think, I believe it took place somewhere around 2016 or 2017. Yeah, so I saw, I think some few kids actually answered correctly. So good, yes. you pay attention to the world news. <laughs> and that's very important too, because now we are part of a global community. So we need to, we you guys need to um, follow some important news from the world too, not just from 
uh, your school or from your family, which is also very important because that's your small community. But yes, uh, listen sometimes to the important news, not just watching funny video in YouTube, okay? <laughs> okay. So again, um, this one, we also include some submission guide and submission template, which you can access later on. I'm not going to uh, spend too much time over here. This is just a reference to help you. And let's see. OK, so we show you the video about uh, one of the resources available from Ready AI for the data. I just want to mention a little bit about this book. So. <clears throat> These books um, have been published. Uh, it is available in soft copy if you guys can order from Amazon. <laughs> but the hard copy may be a little bit dif difficult to get in Indonesia. The good news is um, actually our Kodokido team has been very privileged to um, join this project to translate. We are going to translate this book into um, Bahasa Indonesia, and of course, from Ready AI, they also um, have translated to so many different languages so that the kids, even though they maybe they're not very fluent in English, they can they can learn from as young as kindergarten because the book itself is very colorful, it has a lot of illustration. Jadi ini uh, mudah-mudahan buku yang versi Indonesia akan bisa available juga segera karena tim Kode Kido sedang bekerja sama untuk menerjemahkan buku ini ke bahasa Indonesia. Ada lima, lima set dalam satu buku, eh, ada lima buku dalam satu set yang masing-masing itu membahas uh, ide tadi, lima ide tentang AI, misalnya bagaimana AI itu bisa membuat me, um, memilih jawaban yang betul dan yang salah. Bagaimana AI itu bisa belajar? Karena um, salah satu kriteria penting kenapa mesin itu dibilang pintar, bedanya dengan komputer biasa, mesin dibilang pintar karena bisa belajar. Ya, yeah. so one key difference why we call it AI instead of just a machine or a computer because this program can learn can learn by itself, right? Just like human. When we were small, maybe we know less, but then every day we learn something new and then we build our knowledge. The same thing with AI. It can learn using the data and then it'll become smarter and smarter. So this is one of this book that like how AI learns, it talks about the process of how a computer can learn based on the data. So, um, ya ini semoga bukunya ini juga bisa segera tersedia. Kalau ingin melihat uh, lebih lanjut informasi tentang buku ini ada di URL yang sudah tercantumkan. Oke, okay. oke, okay, ini a little bit yang tadi Miss sudah mention untuk orang tua atau video kalau misalnya merasa Uh, ingin mendalami materi yang spesifik untuk AI dan WC bisa ikut special class uh, yang dijadwalkan oleh Kode Kido. Ini akan didampingi langsung oleh teacher. Uh, satu sesi itu akan ada enam kali pertemuan. <tuh> RSVP, informasi sudah di sini, tinggal diisi saja atau langsung kontak ke WhatsApp number yang tercantum. And this is just uh, the location of all of our centers in Indonesia and the contact number. Um, but right now, let's use this time for open question and answer from the audience, as well as if um, any of the kids, if you want to share, uh, if you already have your initial ideas or initial uh, project, this is your time if you want to Maybe show it to us, show it to Ruth, or show it to other kids. Go ahead.
Sorus, um, Richard mentioned in the chat saying that he is creating an image classifier for IDCs. So what do you think about that idea? I think that's that's super cool. Um, uh, in, in fact, uh, if image classif uh, classifiers or any classifiers is an important, very, very important concept. We saw that Google Create Lab came up with a project on that. They're actually doing right now the voice classifier as well beyond the image cl uh, classifications. So I think that's really cool. And then how you're relating it to eye diseases, I think it's really important. If this is part of your project, um, one, one of my suggestions is don't be afraid to also tell the judges and talk to them about why you're doing this. Maybe this is something that you feel strong about because uh, um, because of a personal story or someone in your community or your family and why you think that's important. So as much as the judges from what I've seen from the previous years are interested in knowing how your program is running, they're also in interested in the the why question why have you decided to do this so try to also in my opinion discuss that in a in a to a greater extent, extent as well but i think that's awesome uh, great job richard i'm sure everybody uh, is looking forward to 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 see that and i'm looking forward to see that as well Another Tido say I'm making a program for parents to teach their children about using time for for good activities like study and others. Ah, I think that's really awesome. I I, I look forward to see it. You know when I you know I, I say one of the most important things not just kids should do. I think all of us should do is how do we invest our time? Again, we have. 24 hours a day, how do we invest it? Who do we invest it with? I don't want to use the word spend. Spending time means you it just, it, it take, it, it's being taken away. Investing it means you have a way to invest it in some shape or form. So I think that's, that's incredibly important. So that's a really interesting topic. It's an important topic. I look forward to see how you're using AI to bring it to the world. From Kodekido team, any of you have question for Ruth? Go ahead. I see that you're asking the title of a book. Um, ah. uh, uh, I don't know what you're referring to, but the books is the AI plus me ones. Well, here we go. Thank you, Ms. Melani, for putting the link up there. The other one is you can access it on, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to put it here. It's a fresh okay. uh, squeeze uh kids.com you can access the other one free also on freshsqueezekids.com which is about data okay thank you for sharing the link so i see somebody also mentioned Okay, Ansel. Ansel say I'm creating a COVID-19 symptom detector. That sounds like a very relevant project at this time. So Ansel, if you don't mind, if you can unmute yourself, can you speak a little bit about that project? You can speak. Can you unmute? Ansel? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. So, how old are you, Ansel? Um, ten. I in this um in this October um I will go up to eleven. You're gonna be eleven years old in October. Okay, that's yes. good. Okay. So um. So tell me, like, the idea of this project. Where did you get that idea from? My dad. My dad told me about uh, about problems that happens to during this pandemic. One of it, like 
um, COVID-19 right now is spreading so fast, so we don't know um, even if we have COVID-19 or not. So I guess we can make the symptoms when we go out and when the detector beating and um, that means there has um there is some symptoms that happens from COVID nineteen um, on us so we can go back to home to our home and and maybe report it to uh, to the hospital and taking care of us. Right. Thank you for sharing that. That's definitely a very important topic. That's really cool. Looking for looking forward to actually seeing the project. I'm sure, as I said, it's relevant, something you feel strong about. Feel free to also talk about those connections. Why? Again, there was uh, your father had to do with this. So this is this is this is important. But great job and best of luck to you. And thank you for being here at 9 a.m. And thank you all for being here at 9 a.m. I don't know how many of you had breakfast. I haven't had breakfast. It's 6 a.m. <laughs> After this, I'm going to go have my breakfast. But thank you all. Yeah, we should we should thank Mr. Roos as well because he has to wake up super early to join us today. <laughs> my pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Um, Last question. Let's see if there's anybody has a, a last question before we close this. <laughs> okay. Alta was asking, where do we make the project, Miss? Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, the project, you can make it in any platform that you choose. You can make it in Scratch, you can make it in Pictoblocks, you can make it in uh, MIT at Inventor. It doesn't matter. But the one that you need to submit, you only need to submit two things. One is the slide, the slide presentation. And then the second one is the video. In the video, you basically explain, right? Explain and show your result because the judge, they want to hear from you. They want to see you explaining your idea, right? So this is also a, an opportunity for you to be able to convey your idea. Sometimes people have a lot of ideas, but it's only in their head. <laughs> but they have to be able to explain it to other people. So this is a, a practice. So don't worry if if you, let's say, oh, but I, I cannot speak English very well. That's okay, no problem at all. Yang penting, berani dulu. The important thing is like, go for it. Terus maybe you can also comment. I think that's maybe a, a good point because maybe some of these kids, indeed, they don't speak English that fluently. So what do you think in terms of like, <laughs> Hey, first of all, first of all, I don't speak English well myself. <laughs> yes. English is a second is my second language. I speak Farsi. However, there's a language we all speak. That do you know what language that is? Anybody? English. English? No. That like Mandarin? No, not yet. At least. The language, I'm sorry, what was that? Indonesia. Indonesia. I, you know what? Maybe we should, huh? Thinking about it. Aha, uh -huh. someone says coding. coding. Yes. yes. Coding. But the more important language that we speak is passion. No matter what language you speak with, if you bring your passion to your audience, if you bring your enthusiasm your energy to the audience right i don't care where they're from what they speak they can feel it right so number one rule in way have fun because if you're having fun 
that means you're doing something you have passion about. If you have passion about, that means you're enjoying it. And you're, in a way, radiating all that energy. And once you're sending out that energy, the judges, even through computer screens, will get it. How do I know that? Because I've seen it firsthand. I've been, I've been interacting with hundreds, thousands of kids from all over the world, from Indonesia, where you're from, to Australia, to Luxembourg, to Argentina, to Chile, to you name it, right? In fact, I, as I'm in the UAE, I meet with students. In, so I was in Saudi Arabia a week before, another country a week before. I meet with students. They all speak the passion language. Whatever you do, do it with passion. Do it with energy and really enjoy it. And that is what judges will notice. But guess what? Forget about the judges. Think about yourself. Rule number one, have fun. Rule number two, have fun. Rule number three, if rule number one and two are half, having fun, probably rule number three is have fun as well. <laughs> okay. That is perf a perfect closing for uh, this workshop. Again, thank you so much for everyone who just joined in the Sunday morning. Now you guys, you guys can go out and play. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Roos, for joining us and as well as all of the Code Kido team. Um, kids, if you have questions, you have just ask your parents to contact one of our uh, teacher. They will be able to help you more on this one. Okay. So we're going to see you next time. Bye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Rose, Mr. Bye. 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 You, um, the submission is not due until November, so we will tell your parents the link to submit the project. Okay. We will email it, yeah.